Hi everybody, Nigel here back with you again. Oh, what have I got for you here? Okay, so this, you've seen the review, you might have seen the review. This is the latest from Sven over at One Man Army. Um, Sven is going to be up at Telford this weekend. Today is Thursday the 9th of November 2023. This weekend, 11th and 12th, is Scale Model World up at Telford. Um, and he's going to be there with a stand and he'll have lots and lots of stuff to show you. Please go and see him and tell him that you saw his stuff on my videos. And then he'll know that my videos are really popular with his stuff. And, um, but basically, um, I decided to do a sort of test of these roundels as per the instruction. As you can see on the back of here, the wing roundels and the fuselage roundels. And... Boy, oh boy, did I get into a mess. So what I've done is three options. OK, so first of all, I thought it was going to be plain sailing. It's going to be easy. Follow the instructions on the back and then do it my way as well. With like you saw me doing this one here with the um, with the RAF stuff. Uh, and you saw me do three videos and then we did the one with the stenciling on there as well. So what I did initially was did these... These two, these are the two Spitfire wings. So you'll see those come together using two different methods. Um, one following the instructions, one doing it my way. And I had a nightmare with following the instructions and the end result is the worst of all. And then I thought, well, let's try a different way. So about 32, 34, 35 minutes into the video, you'll see this one come out and we got that one done. So, um, I'll show you the way we did that one. And that is basically not following the instructions, but also putting them on after. Now, I would prefer to put them on beforehand and then mask them and paint the camouflage over the top, um, which is how I like to do things. But you may not want to do that. And if you've already built and painted your model and you want to get these masks, then that for you is impossible. So um, you've got three different options there in this video. And believe me, if you've got this set, I would really recommend, even if you put it in like double speed or something, if I bore you to tears, watch this video because you could really, really come unstuck. I've got some great little bits and pieces I've picked up along the way and a few little tips and everything. But um, at first it's really, really difficult. But in the end, you'll see I've made it work and got there through trial and error. So hopefully you can learn from my mistakes basically we'll go from there so uh yeah sit back and enjoy as i say it's about it's because i'm putting a what's this three minutes at the start it's going to be about 35 minutes in you'll see this one come out um and i believe that is probably the one for you if you want to paint your model first and it's probably overall the easiest one as well so uh sit back and enjoy get yourself a brew or a beer or whatever and uh thanks for watching Oh, by the way, the video, I have edited the living daylights out of it because it was just so much going wrong. You you really see me struggling. Um, if you want to see me struggle with something, this is the one for you to watch because I really, really struggled with this. I lost the will to live. Um, as as Sven will tell you if you see him, we exchanged some emails. But I've come up with a a plan and it works. Enjoy. So I've got a couple of wings here, they're Spitfire wings, and what I've done, one of them is painted as per the model would be, intermediate blue, it's roughly the right colour, it's, it's Tamiya XF18, I don't know why, but it's glossy, but it's XF18, um, so that's good, so that's like that, and then this one here is painted with Mr Surfacer 1000, thinned with um, levelling thinner, so that's our white base, so you can see what I'm doing here is putting the round on first and then doing the camouflage after, and then we can see which one looks better. If you remember, I did this before on a Heinkel wing with all RAF roundels and everything. We're going to do the same thing now, but with this. And then perhaps we'll do some stencils on that afterwards as well. So the first thing to do, as per the instructions, is to stay, start with the base mask. So what I'm going to do is very carefully come in with my knife. I'm going to get my unprepared again. I'm going to get my anise super precision tweezers these things are amazing okay so i'm going to remove the circle from here okay and then i'm going to put this somewhere where i can use it again i don't want to uh 
I don't just want to throw it away. I'm going to put that there on that little cutting mat. That A5 cutting mat I've got because of my new paper background. So we're going to see, we'll leave that there. We'll see how that goes. Now I've also got on here some small triangles of tape I've cut off. So what I'm going to do there is take that one off of there. Lift up this lower left hand corner. And then put that piece of tape under there. Just like that. Okay, and that makes it easier to lift that off when we take it off the model and we won't scratch the paint. So now what we need to do, if we just took that off, we'd obviously lose the circularity. So what I'm going to do is use this piece of masking tape here as a transfer tape. Okay, so we're going to line this up carefully on this corner. Oh, you can also see I've marked two lines, that's the centre, uh, because of where I want to position it on the wing. So, put that into that corner, put that one into that corner, and then the rest of it should all line up. There we go. So I'll give that a nice firm rub down. Now the, the transfer tape will stick to this tape better than the tape will stick to the backing because it's shiny. And then when we put it on the model, the masking tape will stick better to the model than the transfer tape will stick to the masking tape. Yeah. The transfer tape will stick better to the masking tape than the masking tape will stick to the backing here because the backing is shiny. Then when we put it on the model, this masking tape will stick to the model better than the transfer tape will stick to the masking tape. Okay, what we have got to be careful of is not getting too much in there. So what you can do uh, is put a circle underneath there first. Okay, so what you could do now if you wanted to is get a circle of tape and put it on the inside of there so that it doesn't stick to there. Okay, otherwise the, you run the risk of your transfer tape sticking very well to the wing. So what we can do is lift this off and then put the piece of tape on afterwards or you could have put it on first. So I've got some circles here already cut out. So I'm going to get one of these just peeled up ready to go. And we can take this, we can lift this one up. The transfer tape will hold it all together. As you can see, we've got a perfect circle. I'm going to put this one down on its back, just like so. And then I'm going to put this circle into here. And hopefully, there we go, that wasn't bad. I got it right so we just stick that on there and now when we stick this down the transfer tape won't stick to the model now those two lines I put are a center line because I want to get the center of the star lined up on this panel line so I can put this down have the top edge have the top edge of the circle lined up on there I'm on the wrong panel line have that lined up on there and have this end lined up on there so that one up there, that's good enough. And then we can push this down, push it down really, really well. I do run the risk at the end of this of it all lifting the paint off because it hasn't been painted very long. Okay, so that's that done. And then we can come along with our transfer tape. I've got the lower left there. So we can grab our transfer tape and peel it off. Notice I'm pulling it, I'm not doing this, I'm doing this. I'm pulling it back like that and then it's less likely to pull the tape off. Okay, so that's our transfer tape done. Put that there, we might want to use it again. Then we can go around and give that a nice proper rub down. All right, so that's that. And now what we need to do is come along with some extra masking tape, go around the outside and then spray that white. Now with this one, what it's asking me, to, what I'm going to do here is just put the star, okay, and then we're going to spray the blue, and then we're going to mask off the whole thing and spray the camouflage. So what I'm going to do is take the star from here, okay, I'll take the star from this one here, but I want to use some transfer tape because I don't want to lose the shape of the star. Because it's got that hollow centre, we will lose the shape of the star. So what I'm going to do is just put this piece of transfer tape here and as you can see it just leaves the corners of the star exposed so I just want to take the star now this is going to be very difficult because once we've done this painted this got this on and painted it blue 
we've then got to put this outer mask on and try and get it lined up. It's going to be very difficult, but I'm just going to show you it can be done. So grabbing the corner of the star, get my wider tweezers. I don't trust them, they may be dirty, they, they may get dirt on the back. So we can lift this up and as you can see, it's pulling the circle up. We can soon push it back down. And there we go, we've got that there like that. And now we can line this up on that panel line. So we're going to get the top point on that panel line, just back from the edge, just like so. And then down here, we can use a rule and we should be able to see that, yeah, we're good to go, I believe. What I'm going to do is just push down the top half just down the bottom half gently. Now I should be able to lift this tape off and check that it's good. It's just off. So what I'm going to do is lift up the star. It should come with the transfer tape. Just show when you've got it down, it's not all over there. The whole thing's so I have to, I'm gonna to have to leave it like it is. What I should have done was put a mark on that circle. So remember that if you're doing this, put a mark on the circle. But um, I can lift that transfer tape off now, put that back over there. We could use that again. And you can see I've got that just off on that line. What we could do is actually move it, but um, life's too short. <laughs> but if I was doing this properly, what I would do is actually. Um, make a mark on the, you can see I've actually done it on this one already I've used the wrong one but I made a mark on the circle that's what I should have done but uh, there we go so that's that one there so all I've got to do now is get some blue sprayed around this one and some white sprayed on that one the one problem with doing that where that center piece is there we need to cover that up so I've got some circles of tape I've cut here they're 14 millimeter diameter so I should be able to put that down over the center of the star and that will seal in that edge okay so that's that done okay so I tried to move that one over and made a right mess of it so I've had to take another one out and what I did I made a mark down the center then I put the transfer tape over the top as you can see there transferred the line onto there and then lined it up with the panel line and off we go right so um, that's the way I want to do it this is the one-man army method. You can obviously do either. If you finish your model, then this is the way you're going to go. So the biggest issue with this is, A, is covering the white. So what you could do if you wanted to is spray this blue first and then be even worse because it's a darker blue. So the one-man army method is to spray all this white. The problem with that is this outer edge is going to be blue. So if you get a nice thick edge of white paint around there, when you, um, when you take the, the, the masking tape off, you will see a white line around there because, because the white has got to cover the blue, it's going to have to be quite thick, which is why I think this method is going to be better. So what I'm going to do here is when I spray, I'm going to spray across the masking tape rather than spray... A bit blocked up. Okay, so I painted the blue on this one. Um, I actually did this one and then not wanted to move it and it just peeled the paint off because I did it too quickly. It may happen again but we, we shall see. Um, I may have to completely restart making this video in that case you'll never see this one. But anyway what we're going to do now is get the transfer tape. I'm going to put this over our complete circle. Okay put that down well. And then we can pick this up and hopefully get the whole thing to come away together. There we go. That's, that was nice. The whole thing's come away together just like that. Okay, and now we've got to put this into this circle. Now you can see here 
this is going to be very difficult because we've painted the mask and it's very difficult to see the edge but if we get a fine sanding stick and just basically just gently rub around the edge of the mask we should be able to highlight the edge a bit better and make it a bit easier to see okay so there we go we can we can now see the edge of that a lot better I don't think it's working on the camera but we can see the edge of that a lot better I did not want that to fall off my finger like that that was lucky right so what we need to do now is get the top of this star we can see the top of the star there we need to get that lined up with that panel line and the black mark that we put on there the pencil line and just get that lined up into this circle like so okay and just let that go down like that now we now need to come down and just very gently you see this is the problem this is this is the most difficult part of doing it this way because we now have to line this up and the trouble is as soon as the mask touches the paint it wants to stick down you can see we're a mile away over here so we need to come up so we need to try and lift this off but as you can see the mask just wants to stay on the paint even though I haven't even pushed it down and it's lifting the bloody paint again so there we go I don't think this is going to be very easy to do at all. I have actually emailed Sven. Um, I think really this is the best option. I think doing it this way, what we need is the old type where you have the square. So you could line up the corners of the square and push it down. Now I'm going to try this again. You can hear Jess under the bench with her bottle. And we can see the point of the star there. He says, try this one around here because I can see the point on that one. I'm going to try and get this lined up on there. And just basically, see, as soon as I touch it, it moves. But it really is sticking very, very well to the paintwork. So, do I have this lined up? No, I do not. It is very very difficult guys to do this and as I say the problem is it is just sticking so well to the paint because these masks do they stick very very well and it doesn't want to stick to the transfer tape and as you can see it's all starting to fall apart on me it's going completely and utterly pear-shaped and you can see the mask is just falling apart because the track and it's just it's coming apart now look the transfer tape can't hold it together so I've got a feeling what I'm going to do here is actually break this up let that come off of there and I'm going to do this live on camera let's see if we can make this work because I'm really struggling here guys so that one there that needs to be butted up into that corner it might be better to do it this way and obviously on a finished model this is going to be a nightmare so I can butt that up into that radius there you see when you pick it up it wants to pull the other side in yeah this is um, this is very very difficult but I can tell you now I mean we're, we're doing this this one here will look better anyway so I would seriously suggest let's break these apart I would seriously suggest going for what I've done there because I think on here we're going to have quite a build up on the edge So that needs to be over to that one. 
Remember, all we're doing this for is to position the star because the star doesn't come out to the edges. It would be so much easier if I could just see the bloody edge of this circle. We're picking up bits of debris now. Hmm. This is so much more difficult than the, than the RAF roundel. go so now this one's gonna go remember guys as I say this is only for positioning the star I just cannot see what I'm doing here no this is just this is ridiculous The trouble is it just sticks so bloody well to that LP paint. I can't put it on and slide it. So what we can do now is come along with this star. And maybe, I mean the star's all lost its shape as well, look. Um, Don't know what I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do, where to go. I, I haven't got a clue. This is uh, this is just not going to work. Um, this would probably be a lot better if you sprayed the blue first, and then rub the mask, and then you get the edge of the mask showing through, and then you put this in. And then spray the star white. Again, you can have these three big build-ups of paint. This is going to be by far the superior subject. Now, okay, so I need to get this onto there because I want to mask that circle off to do the blue. So I am going to take my transfer tape onto there, rub it down good and hard. And then hopefully we can get this off of here, get it to come away in one piece, just like so. And somehow get this aligned with that star under there. Now I'm just wondering now if I rub If I just very gently rub the mask with a very fine sanding sponge, as you can see, it shows it up a lot better. Okay, so that might make life easier. I need to somehow get that on there. No, no way. You can't. You just can't do it. Um. Can't see anything. I'm just going to gently push that down. And then peel away the transfer tape. Okay, we got there in the end. What I ended up doing was literally plonking the star on there. This was the star that was on that backing paper. And I plonked the star on there and just pulled it around to get it flat. And because we got that circular hole in the middle, 
you can use that with a circuit with, with the mass that goes in there and you can use that to actually sort of round it all up and everything. I didn't film it because I didn't think it was going to work but it's by far the easiest way. It's probably easier if you know where your star is going to come here and here. Don't bother with those outer pieces, just put the star in. So paint, put your outer mask on, paint it white and then just get the star and stick it on. Um, use transfer tape and if you're lucky you get it in the right place then all well and good but uh, don't bother doing what I did with those outer segments. Don't try and position it. Now this one here we got there and I've put the circle, I've pulled the centre out of one of these and I've put that over that so that's all masked off now so we know we won't get any bleed of the, um, the fuse, of the, the, the blue colour going into there. So what I'm going to do now is spray this one with the dark blue, I'm going to spray this one with the light blue and then we'll see how it all looks when it's all dry. Okay, so we've got the paint down um, and what we need to do now we may decide just to leave it at this and, and remove everything and that's that but if we want to put the meatballs in the middle we'll put the meatballs in the middle so we'll have a look at how we're going to do that. So I'm going to grab my tweezers, in fact I'm going to use a knife just to pick up this, this piece of masking here and as you can see that has basically come away and left us a clear mark. So what we can do now is come in with some masking tape when the paint's fully dry mask off everything else, remove that centre disc and spray red. So that's what we can do on that one. This one, um, we've got all this tape to come off. And what I would like to do is have a, a mask with a circle cut out of the centre. I think what we'll do is just, yeah, this is, uh, this is taking away, or is it? Oh no, it's not. It's um, it's leaving the mask down, and it's taken away that central circle. So that's good. And I'm doing this before the paint is absolutely fully dry because, as I've said so many times before, remove the masking before the paint fully cures. Because otherwise, what happens? You've got this. You've got the masking tape here. You've got the paint right up to it. And when you pull the tape away before the paint cures, it'll just come away. When it's cured, it may tear. Um, you might end up with fluffy bits of masking tape sticking out of the paint or you'll end up with big steps everywhere. So you can see there we've got that done so that's good. Now we've got the everything here masked up so all we've got to do on this one is remove that centre disc. Hang on have I got is that mask still there? We have the yeah that is the centre disc. So we've got this marking here that yellow mark where I've got my larger mass, it's about 14 mm diameter. So if we mask up to the edge of that, then we can remove the centre disc, which as you can see is a separate part in there. And then we'll spray that in there red. So I'll let all the paint dry first, and then um, we'll come back to it and see how it looks. Right, so a couple of hours later, we've got the the rest of the, the sort of the, 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 the round all masked off. So now we're going to come in with our knife and we're just going to pick out this circle in the centre just like that, lift it up and then there we go we've got that one coming out of there and as you can see I've got all the masking tape going around to allow me to spray the red without getting any bleed through and any gaps so there we go, so that's the actual, that's not the circle I put on that's the actual circle that's in the mask. That's that's the circle that's in here on those stars. Okay, so now we can paint that red and then unmask everything. All right, so I've got some red paint in the airbrush, as you can see. So we're just going to dust this on. Just keep it dry. Don't let it saturate. Don't let it get wet. Just dust it on. And this is Tamiya XF7, which mixed with... I'm going to air now to dry it out. This is Tammy XF7 mixed with uh, X20A acrylic purely because of the smell. And do the same on this one. Just dust it in. Keep it dry. And there we go. We'll get our red meatball in the middle of our star. Just blow it back. Let it dry out. Do not let it get wet because it will bleed under the tape and you will bleed in the panel lines and everything. So there we are. Just give that one another blow back to air. And a quick, quick flash over, bleed back to air. 
bit of flash over just to make sure it's red. As you can see, we've used next to nothing. So there we go. So we've got our red meatballs in the middle of our roundels. Okay, so now we can see how they look. We can get this scrap masking tape off of here. There we are, that's that off. And then this one here can come off. I can't remember now which is which, to be honest. So that can come off of there. So we've got the... Um, this is the one that we've done as per the instructions. So this is the one where we've put the mask on, sprayed it white, put the star in and everything. So we'll see how this one looks. And I have a feeling this one's going to have a, a bit of a step. Now, I did the bottom left-hand corner, but if we turn it over, it's the bottom left-hand corner. And that allows us to pick this up and remove the outer ring. And just as I said at the beginning of the video, there's the problem. We have a white ring around the mask. Now, that is the problem with doing it this way. Um, and this is what I found when I did the REF roundels in my four video series. If you haven't seen that, go and have a look. So we can remove this star with the meatball in the middle. And as you can see, that looks lovely. We've got a lovely looking star. We've got a lovely roundel in the middle, a meatball in the middle, but we've got this white edge and that is what is the problem. Um, and you can also see, I don't know if you can see it, but there's quite a step because we've had to build up the white to cover over the blue, the sort of middle blue, which we've used. And that is um, that is the problem. So let's have a look at this one. This one is done my way, where we sprayed the white first, then we've masked the star and sprayed the blue, and then we've uncovered the red and sprayed the red. So let's see how this one looks. I think this one should look a lot better. Now, one of the major problems I had with this was the trying to remove um, trying to get the masking to go in place as per what we required. So this is all coming off individually here. I'm going to keep the camera rolling because I know you all love to see an unmasking. What I'm going to do is pick this one up and pick this one up. There we go. So we'll take this off of here. We'll take this one off of here and we'll take this one off of here. And as you can see, we have a lovely clean line with the blue around the outside. We don't have any step to speak of. We certainly don't have any white lines around it. So now we can come in and grab this mask and reveal the white star with the meatball in the middle and there we go so as I said to you as I thought at the beginning from my previous experience with doing the roundels and stuff this one I doubt you can see it but it's very very smooth there's no big steps or anything this one I mean you can probably hear it There you go. If I slide my fingernail, you can feel it. You can hear the edge. Whereas this one, there's nothing. Right. So here we are back again. This is now a couple of days later since I finished the previous bit of video you've just seen. Um, and unfortunately, that video you've just seen would have probably been a bit of an edited mess. But I need to get the message across. Basically, what I'm saying is I've spoken to Sven um, on a couple of occasions since I've done this trial. And it would appear that the the problem is in the first part of the instructions here where it says start with the base mask, um, paint white. OK, now. 
that's the problem it's the painting of the white so let's just imagine you, you don't want to use this method by far this method will give you the best effect where you put the white paint down first then you put the star on then you paint the blue and then you mask up and paint the red okay that's and then you mask up the whole thing and paint your camouflage around it so there's no you can see there's no step there as i showed you before and if you want to sand it i mean this is a this is a 1500 grit sponge and if you want to sand it just to smooth everything out and blend it all you can and you've got an absolutely faultless look there so there you go the reason you've got that shiny area around is because of the paint underneath the, the white paint i believe because i think i used mr service didn't i so i think that's why you've got that sort of shiny area there and the rest of it is matte but um that wouldn't happen on your model if you didn't use mr surfacer uh, also i wouldn't use white um that's one of the things sven's commented on is about using white it's too it's too bright you need to sort of tone it down a bit use a, a very very light gray but the, the problem with this one is as you can see we've got that massive build up where we try to cover the blue color with the white and also if you decide you want to sand it this is what happens as you can see you get the white edge appearing so what i'm doing now i'm going to try a, a third option um, and what i've done i've got my hunker 111 wing and i've sprayed an area of it in the is it insignia blue it's called i can't remember a medium intermediate blue isn't it intermediate blue so i've sprayed that in the intermediate blue as you can see there and so we're going to do this over the camo so if you remember i showed you i did this one here which was painting it before the camo and then painted the, the, the paint over the top so we've got a nice thin no no built up edge and on this one here we actually did the the white as you already know so we're going to do this on the camo so we're going to do this as per the instructions as sven has set out but we're going to swap it around a bit i personally believe this is probably going to be the best way to go about it um if it works this doing it all first is all well and good but you just might not want to do it that way and getting everything in there and positioned all precisely and everything it's not going to be so easy when you've got a built-up model as it is here you know especially on the sides of the fuselage whereas here it's very easy just on a flat wing to do all this so you know please bear that in mind but i'm going to show you i have played around with this a lot and i've wasted a lot of masks but i'm going to try and show you how I'm going to do this okay so the first thing i'm going to do is take a sharp pencil and i'm going to make a line halfway across here which is 22 and a half millimeters okay so it doesn't need to be that precise it just needs to be in the ballpark you know we're not looking for fractions of millimeters here you know, anything with the nearest half a millimetre sort of thing. And we're going to make a line on there. Okay. And it's imperative that it goes through the mask. It needs to be right through. Okay. It doesn't matter about it being on this tape here. It doesn't matter about it being in there. So what we're going to do is I've got a 44 millimetre square of masking tape here. Oh, the one thing I've forgotten, silly me, was to get a little scrap of masking tape. So I'm going to take a piece of this. Take a little corner and as you know we always put a piece of masking tape under the bottom left corner it does two jobs one it shows us where the bottom left hand corner is so if we pick it up and we forget the orientation we know that's the bottom left hand corner so in this is as if that's the top then we know that it needs to be down here um, and the other thing it does it means we can just pick it up easy when it's on the model rather than with scratching our paint so I'm going to put this down onto this square just like I showed you before but the reason I'm showing you this again is because you may not have bothered watching the beginning of the video and quite frankly I don't blame you okay so we're going to remove our our mask now from there but before we do that we're going to look at positioning so I've got this line down the middle here I did actually peel this up and it doesn't want to go back down we've got this line down the middle here and I know that line is going to line up with that panel line there say okay so I know that that's where I want to be as far as positioning goes now we know that we've got a 45 millimeter square and inside is a 40 millimeter circle we know that because i've measured it so we didn't know that before but we do now so that there is two and a half millimeters okay so 40 45 minus 40 is five half of that two and a half millimeters so if i want the top edge of my roundel the edge of the circular part to be 
10 millimeters away from here, I need to basically come along and measure eight and a half millimeters. Come here, rule. I need to measure eight and a half millimeters along that panel line. Okay. And then put a piece of tape. I've got a piece of tape here cut already. So I'm going to put that piece of tape. Let's get on a pair of tweezers that'll make it easier for you to see what I'm doing. I'm going to put this piece of tape eight and a half millimeters away from that edge. Okay, so that's my marker, that center point there. All right, so we're eight and a half millimeters. So when, when we actually put this on, this, the edge of that circle will now be 10 millimeters away from the trailing edge. So we can lift this off like so. And we can place this on here with our line at the top, lined up with the edge of that tape. And then we want the bottom to line up with, the, with that panel line. So the bottom's lined up there, the top's lined up there, and it's lined up height-wise. So now, from the centre, we'll push it out. And we can push it down good and hard. Give it a really good rub, make sure it's properly gone down. Don't want any edges lifting or anything. Take that tape off, stick that over there. Get our mask sheet out of the way. And now we can come along and lift our transfer tape off. And the transfer tape will come away easily, I hope. Okay, so we've got the whole thing on there now. So we're not reading out the centre, we're putting the whole thing on the model. There we go, so we can put that over there for safekeeping. So we've now got the whole thing. And the edge of that circle should be 10 millimetres away. Sorry, it was seven and a half, and it was me. It's going to be eleven millimeters, isn't it? There you go, eleven millimeters away from the edge. Yeah, this is the trouble when you're talking to no one through a camera, because um, I can believe, believe it, there's no one in the room. Um, you get things wrong. So yeah, ten minus two and a half is not eight and a half, Nigel. Right. So now we need to remove that circle from here. I'm going to use these very very pointed tweezers and try to get underneath the edge. Just like so and get that lifted up. Okay, it doesn't matter if we damage the edge, you'll see why in a minute. I've got some wider tweezers here, so now we can pick that off and just take that away. So now we have, and we'll put this again, we'll put this on our little cutting mat. So we've got that one there for safekeeping. Right, so now with our extra bits of masking tape, we're going to come along. And we're going to cover the edges here. In fact, if we go very close to the edge, there we go. That'll give us more area of mask unpainted. Again, you'll see why in a minute. All right, so do the same down here. Have this over like that. And the same here. We don't want it to be, we don't want it to run onto the edge of the circle, but we want the edge of the circle, the tape to be on the edge of the masking tape. So you'll have four places that will leave us a nice yellow line. So I'm going to do now is come in there and paint that with my insignia blue. So we can just go over that, just lightly dusting the paint on not letting it get wet and this is basically my own Tamiya mix this is a it's just a darkened up XF8 really for these demos I don't particularly worry about accuracy of colors and that it's, it's more about the process rather than the the color of the final result okay so you can see that's on there now funny enough there's a star under there you can see there's a star where I've done this before there's all sorts on this wing we've done all sorts with this Remember that that's probably the star from where I did the uh, stars and bars with the DN models masks. So what we're going to do now is leave that to dry. Okay. So we haven't got a lot of paint on there, but that's good. It's, it's sort of faded. It's bleached to whatever. And as I said so many times, this is the beauty with masks. You choose the color. You choose the depth. You choose how faded it is. You choose if you want to scratch it up or whatever. It's all down to you. You're not stuck with what the decal company gives you. So. Right, we'll let that dry and then we can move along to the next stage. Okay, so the paint's kind of dry. We can move along and look at our next couple of bits and pieces we're going to do. So what I'm going to do now 
is remove this masking tape and now you will see why I put the tape right up to the edge of the circle. The reason being when you actually when you have the masking tape on the model fresh off the sheet like this you, it's clear to see the edge of the masking tape against the model but once you paint it all one colour it's not very easy to see which was my which has been my problem all the way through with both the previous methods I showed you on the Spitfire wing if you indeed watched them. So having this masking tape this masking tape going right up to the edge of the circle now I've got four pretty good reference points so I can see where the circle is. Also those pencil lines are now exposed because I've removed the masking the, the masking tape over the top. So now I can see my center line there and I can see my center line there all lined up. Yes it's slightly off I've got it slightly off with the panel line. That's okay I can assure you in the Second World War they didn't look for that kind of precision okay um, as long as it's somewhere handy you just want to get it roughly in the right place. Obviously you don't want it over here but that is roughly in the right place. So we've now got to look at getting the white down. So to get the white down we need to put this piece here in and then remove the star and leave this outer sort of cutter frame in so that that remains blue. Now the easiest way to do that the circle we took out of here we can use that as our transfer tape but unfortunately if you look here it's, it's, it's exactly the same size so if we put that over that we won't be able to see the ends of the star so we've got to reduce that in size. So I've got a cheap nasty plastic circle cutter here they cost nothing and they're really really good. They're no good for making masks like this but they're okay for sort of you know it's what we're going to do here. So what we've got to do is find the center of this circle so all I'm going to do I know it's 40 millimeters in diameter so we're going to go 20 there draw a line we're going to go 20 there draw a line so I know that's roughly the center it doesn't need to be exact and I've got this set at about 38 millimeters so we can come along with our circle cutter and just gently don't go don't try and cut it in one turn you want to go over in a few passes you can hear when it's cut because you can hear there's no sound and then just remove that edge and there we have our, our circle ready to go. So what we can do with this is pick this up, okay, get that off of there, get that out of the way, come along here onto our star that I doubt if you can see but basically what we have here we can get the light to work, come on light you can see we have a star within the circle you've seen it all before haven't you and this needs to go roughly over the middle of that just roughly it doesn't need to be precise the main thing is we want to see those that corner there sticking out okay and what I'm going to do here what I should have done before I put the transfer tape on actually it's great to see making all these mistakes isn't it what we need to do now is before we take this one off we need to come from that point so you can see it we need to come from that point there and that point there and mark a line and then we can line that up with our vertical line there when we fit it but you should be able to just use the top corner, the top point lined up with your black line. So we can put a black line there. Okay, so we can see now we've got that line there. So once again, we'll put this on. As you can see, this is something I think you will get really good at the more times you use them because every time I do a video, I learn something else like then. You know, I thought oh, I need a line there, so I put one in. <laughs> um, so what we've got to do now is try and remove this. Let's give this a good rub, actually. Okay, so we're going to try and remove this without damaging it. There we go. Get under there. Pick it up. That's all come away nicely. 
Okay. Now something I wouldn't normally suggest, but something I'm going to do here is just touch the back of the mask and just try and detack it a tiny little bit. Don't do it on your hand or your arm because you may get a hair stuck under it. I'm just going to do this just to enable me so it won't be like the proverbial to a blanket. So I'm hoping this paint is dry enough. So now we've got this line here, so we know that's our top point. Okay, so I'm going to put this down so that the top point is lined up with that line on the masking tape and I'm pushing the masking tape up to the edge. Okay, and I'm going to come out and then bring this down. Now I can see I'm over I'm over that way too far. I'm going to attempt to lift. As you can see it's extremely difficult because it just sticks to the model so well. And the problem is that cutter frame around the outside, that is what you can see there, the corner of that is stuck to the model really well. And I'll try and get that off without scratching the paint. And that's the hardest part. Okay, so th this is, I can't think of a way of doing this easier. If you could put water down or something, it might be easier. Just something to enable you to see the centers come off in my finger, but that's okay because that's coming off anyway. Right, so that's going over there on the cutting mat. As you can see, this is really tricky. And it's one of those, you get it right the first time, you'll be happy. So I can see that tape is over to the edge there. Now that centre line hasn't lined up perfectly with that line at the bottom, but I'm not going to worry about that. What I'm worried about is having this circle correct in here. And to be honest, I think it's good. So if we're happy with the position of that, we can give that a good old push down. And you should be able to feel, now I can feel I've got a bit of a step there. Yeah, if anything, it's slightly sort of four o'clock go, but if anything, it's just, just you can see there's just a raised edge there, and we'll probably have a tiny, tiny gap there, which means our star is going to end up being slightly, very slightly out of kilter. But as you can see, that if you, I mean, I'm pushing it hard, you're never going to do this on your model, but you, it, it's, it's very, very difficult. And this is why I put this tape over here so that I could see the edges. Now we need to remove this transfer tape, which should be easy. Okay, put that back on our board. Now the hard part is going to be removing this star. And as you can see, I'm just going to use my magnifier. I can see that I've got a tiny gap here and we've got a tiny bit of over there. So we can try and just slide it across and it may go As I say, if I could find an easier way to get this down and able you to slip, like with vinyl, you'd use water, get it all position, and then squeegee the water out. But with masking tape, you can't. But um, that's going to that's going to look absolutely fine when it's done. Believe me, it's it's basically going to be the star is going to be slightly this way. But I can't imagine it in real life the stars would have been perfect anyway. But um, there we go. So if you want a chance lifting it off and putting it back on again. You're a better man than me. So we're going to get under the corner of this star. Okay, and lift that out. And what I want, I'd like this star to come away in one piece. It doesn't matter if it goes out of shape, because we're going to reuse it. I'm going to use these tweezers without the points. There we go. So we're going to get this star out of here. Just like so. There we go. And we can put the star over here on the cutting mat. 
just like that. Okay, so now we've got our star. So if all we want is the star without the red circle, we can spray the white and we're finished. But what we need to do now is use the masking tape and mask off from the corner of each of the star's legs, like so. And the reason we're doing that, there could be a gap here or anywhere. If we spray it white, we'll get the horrible white line again. So what we're doing is covering up corner to corner on the star. We're covering up so we don't get that that white image around the edge, the white witness, should I say, around the edge of the star. Okay, just like so. And then we need another piece. Just going to put that down there, put that down there, there we go. So now we can paint our white. And for this I'm going to use LP35 Tamiya Insignia White. So I'll get that done and I'll see you back in a minute. Okay, a small while has gone by and we let the paint dry. So if we just want the the star without the meatball, we could just take everything off now. Job done. Maybe go over it with a light sanding sponge just to remove any edges. But if we do want to put the meatball in, what we've got to do here is refit this star. So I'm going to get this gently off the... In fact, I'm going to use my tweezers that don't have points so we don't start scratching anything. So I'll get this off this paper, just like so. And the beauty of this is, as before, We've got that central circle to use as a final check to make sure everything's correct. What we're going to do is lay this back into here in its original, or well, kind of, but it doesn't need to be spot on. Remember, this was all done with stencils and masks and everything. Probably done in the field, on the ship, whatever. So it doesn't need to be perfect. Now, I'm going to get it as good as I can. I'm not going to bore you with watching me put the whole thing in. But I'm just going to put one. Oh, come on. Just one, please. Just one can go in. I've scratched the paint there. Look. I would recommend leaving the paint for at least sort of five or six hours at least. When you see me do these videos, obviously I need to get the video done and out. And I, I do not want to be making a video over, over days and days. So I tend to do everything while the paint's still a little too soft. But basically we're going to get that star let in there. Sort of as neat as we can. Okay. And, and that's it. And we're going to have a nice round circle in the middle and to check the round circle we can use our mask. Okay, that's in there. And just to check, what we can do is get our mask that goes in the middle and just offer that up and it will show us straight away if we've got any massive amounts of ovality or anything. That means the, the red circle we put in there will also have massive amounts of ovality. So we can just place that in the center. And as we can see, that's pretty good. Okay, it's good enough for what we want. Right, so we can take that off. And remember, when you do this on your Devastator wing, you can have all the ridges to contend with. Now, it's suggested in the instructions that what you do is you make sure you go over and over. The trouble is with that, it's going to make the, the, the mask go oval. And the same will happen with the decal. So what I'm going to be tempted to do when I do my, my one properly is, is actually put the mask on flat Make sure it stays flat and then try and stretch it into the ridges and then gently spray by keeping it 90 degrees and just hope that we get nice crisp edges. But uh, looking at those photographs I put up earlier, if you look at the real thing, um, or I put up in the review, didn't I? You can see the edges aren't perfect on that. Um, so now what we need to do is make sure that we cover everything outside of that circle. So we need to get our old bits of masking tape here. In fact, I'm going to rip these up. So we're going to mask everything outside of that circle, otherwise we're going to get red bleeding into any gaps we've got. 
and this is a, a common theme with everything you do with these masks make sure you cover the edges of everything else before you start painting any other colour so now you can see all we've got exposed is that circle in the centre you may also see that in the centre there I've got a speck of dust I'm not sure if you can see it there's a speck of dust in the paint so I can come along with a little stick and just very gently rub it use the smooth side and there we go just to get rid of it and then do a little check we've got some XF7 in here so just very lightly build this up just like so keeping it dry you don't want to go flooding it as you know I say it every time and there we go that's that done so now we can take all this masking tape away just like so we're finished with that now it's like a Chrysler badge doesn't it so now we can completely unmask the whole thing so we'll start with this corner so we can oops, throw my tweezers around we can come along into this corner and lift this one off okay and we'll see how bad our misalignment was now on that circle and then we can get underneath here and just lift this one off and as you can see this is the one that breaks up as soon as I said this is the one that breaks up it stopped breaking up <laughs> unbelievable isn't it just because the camera's on right, so I get rid of those bits of tape there and then I'm going to come in with a knife under the corner of here and see if I can get this up there we go so we can lift our star off just like so and there we go and as you can see we have our insignia put on after the the camouflage or the blue so as you can see now I'm rubbing this with my finger you can see bits of white coming off that's the edges that are built up on the masking tape so what we can do now is come along this is a 2500 grit and I'm just going to very gently stay away from that red because it's still soft also I want to stay away from the red because otherwise I'll rub through the red to the white and we, you can see we do get an edge but unfortunately if you spray in white on top of a colour that is pretty much unavoidable you, you're probably going to seal everything in with a clear coat before you weather or you can just keep going and end up with a very authentic slightly softer edge there we go that's got rid of that edge and as you can see I don't know if you can see it like but there is it's a very slightly softened edge but it's got rid of the step. Okay, I wonder if I could get away with. There we go. We can sand the whole thing, even that rub's only just put on. So there we go, guys. If you don't want to do it first, which was the method I used here, I think that's the way to go. Don't worry about the cut different I used a different paint. I used XF8. I've forgotten I'd made my own insignia blue. So this is for the RAF blue, it's the wrong colour for the Americans probably. So there we go. So that is the way to go. Now you should be able to see that that star is slightly off. That mark at the top there, that mark there is because I pushed the tape with the tweezers and because the white paint's not hard, it's dug, it in, dug into it. But there we go. So I hope you enjoyed that. Um, I got very frustrated doing the first part of the video and believe me up to about the half an hour mark um, that was probably three hours and I probably did it three or four times I have used a lot of masks as you can see just to get these three so it's been a little task but we got there in the end so if you are painting your model blue first this is the method I would suggest don't do it as per the instructions put the blue on first 
add the white on top. It's a lot easier, it's a lot less fuss. You saw the problem I got into doing this one and it really was, you know, it was getting depressing in the end. And um, that white bit around the edge is just unavoidable if you use this method. So uh, there you go. Thank you for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. Put your comments down below, any questions or whatever. And if anybody knows the correct Tamiya mix for the correct American blue, I'd be interested to know. That looks pretty good though, doesn't it? Thank you for watching, guys. See you soon.